This video was made possible through the support of my patrons. At the time of making this video, it's March 2022, and we're expecting the announcement of the 14th Doctor any time now. We got the announcement back in July 2021 that Jodie Whittaker would be leaving the show, and fans have waited with bated breath to find out which actor she'd be regenerating into. With this impending changing of the guard, I wanted to use this moment of, uh, of anticipation to look over the past 58 years of Doctor Who history, and to look at how and when previous actors were announced as the iconic Time Lord. And the results were were pretty surprising and also a lot harder to find out than you'd think. So join me for a trip down UK television history as we break down how every actor was announced as the iconic Time Lord known as the Doctor. Now, Doctor Who itself started on November 23rd, 1963. Due to the nature of making television back in the day, the turnaround for production was significantly quicker, at least compared to how it is now, and this is reflected in getting Doctor Who off the ground, with the BBC head of drama at the time, Sidney Newman, and producer or the equivalent of showrunner at the time, Verity Lambert. Doctor Who, or the Saturday Serial, as it was known internally at the BBC for almost a year, was first thought up in December 1962, with auditions for the cast members taking place in June 1963, and an official casting announcement for William Hartnell as the Doctor was at a press photo call on September 20th, 1963. For this event, members of the press and the media were invited to the BBC studios to take photos of the main cast members. It was also here that Carol Caroline Ford, William Russell, and Jacqueline Hill were announced as the co-leads. Now, fast forward a few years later, William Hartnell, due to his ailing health, would retire from the role and announce the departure on August 6th, 1966, and then, 26 days later, his successor was announced. Patrick Troughton. But how would this brand new regeneration be ushered in by the UK media? Another photo call? A magazine or newspaper interview? No, in fact, it's the most understated of every announcement we're going to look at today. On September 2nd, 1966, tucked away in the back pages of the Manchester Guardian newspaper, just above the weather, we find this new story. New Doctor Who. Patrick Troughton, the character actor, has been chosen by the BBC to replace William Hartnell as Doctor Who in the children's television serial. And that's it. 26 words including the headline. That's the story. Can you imagine if the 14th Doctor gets announced like this? Like, Tania Miller just gets announced in the back pages of the Plymouth Herald? Now, we're about to make our transition into colour television, and with it, a brand new Doctor, with Troughton announcing his departure on January 8th, 1969. It would be six months until his replacement was announced, and while not quite as understated as last time, there wasn't quite a lot of hype to be found here, at least by today's standards. John Pertwee's casting was announced by newspapers on June 17th, 1969. Media outlets include The Daily Mail, The Times, and Stage and Television Today, most of them referencing the show's colour debut upcoming in January 1970 on the BBC. The Daily Mail write-up is is the most extensive, with an interview with John Pertwee, who says, It'll be set on Earth in the 1980s. Unit dating confirmed, the mystery is solved. I won't be wearing the Victorian clothes that the other Doctor Whos have used. I'll be in a more modern day suit. With John Pertwee as the lead for five incredible seasons, Doctor Who was seeing its largest audience since Dalek Mania in the mid-1960s, so when he announced that he was hanging up the cape on February 8th, 1974, everyone in the media was frantic trying to figure out who would take over. Thankfully, they wouldn't be waiting long, as only seven days later, Tom Baker, an obscure actor and part-time bricklayer, was cast as the Doctor. It was the Evening Standard who broke the news, with the headline, Tom Baker, dot dot dot, that's who, with the Daily Express also running a story a week later, interviewing Tom Baker's building site friends about the career change. In the Express, Tom Baker said, It's been marvellous working on the building site. I'm sorry to be leaving the lads, but they are all delighted that I've got the part. We also have a statement from John Cords, otherwise known as Chopper. He could have knocked us down with a feather when we first learned he was a big-time actor. 
You wouldn't call him the greatest hog carrier, but he's not bad with the old Rosie Lee. And this line from Tom Baker ends the article. A couple of birds in the local shops started giving me the eye. <laughs> they wouldn't look at me last week. Brilliant. Can you imagine if Jodie Whittaker said that? Oh, the drama. Like William Hartnell's announcement over 10 years ago, this was accompanied by a photo call with Tom Baker, who was wearing a leather jacket posing with a Cyberman. And also there were some photos of him in smart casual attire with Elizabeth Sladen, who played companion Sarah Jane Smith. Tom Baker would play the fourth Doctor for seven years to huge success and acclaim, and TV as well as the general media landscape had massively changed during that seven year time span. It was the 1980s and a basic newspaper column or a photo call, now that wouldn't cut it anymore, especially with producer John Nathan Turner being the showman that he was. And what would be the platform of this change? Why the BBC One news and current affairs show Nationwide, hosted by Sue Lawley. On October 24th, 1980, Tom Baker was interviewed, and it was during this interview he announced his departure. Well, Tom Baker, this is extremely sad news that you're leaving the show, and K9's announced his resignation two weeks ago. So with Master and Dog gone, what's going to happen to the series now? Well, it will just go on and on and on and on, because it's part of our television, isn't it? Why should it stop? There's no evidence. Everybody's been very successful at it. But what's going to happen in the series? There'll be a new Doctor Who, presumably. There will, there will. Regenerated. It's quite hard to leave something when one is very happy at it. And we've now reached 100 million viewers around the world in about 37 countries. And I've done the best I can with it. And I don't really think that I can do any more with it, which is a good enough reason to leave and give someone else a chance to nudge it on a bit, as I hope I nudged it on when I took over. Then, 12 days later, and once again on Nationwide, hosted by Sue Lawley, it was announced that Peter Davison would be playing the Fifth Doctor. I especially like the Mark V subheading for Peter Davison during the interview. And one big topic for this casting was that at 29 years old, Peter Davison was by far the youngest actor to play the Doctor. Tom Baker says it's made him rich. <clears throat> yes, I've, I've heard. Uh, lots of people have asked me today what I'm going to do with all the money. I, <laughs> I haven't seen it yet. What about the image, though? I mean, John Pertwee was sort of professorial and a bit bumbling, uh -huh. and Tom was well, peculiarly humoured and, and the floppy hat and so on. What, what do you think you'll be? What would you like to be like? I don't know, really. I suppose uh, I suppose I could move a bit faster than the others, maybe. <laughs> You're a lot younger than all <clears throat> yes, the rest yes, of them, yes. uh, than your predecessors, aren't you? Mm. Uh, You're 30 something. I'm 29. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> With a new Doctor, a new look, and a new time slot, Doctor Who was on top of the world, with strong ratings and a strong national profile. So after taking the advice of Patrick Troughton, Peter Davison decided that three seasons was enough, and he called it quits on July 28, 1983. There was even talk in the press and in the tabloids that a woman would be cast as the sixth Doctor. And while showrunner John Nathan Turner said that this wasn't on the cards this time, it was something that he considered possible in Doctor Who. Well, I think I'm looking for someone who's older than Peter, uh, perhaps a little more eccentric and even a little bad-tempered. What about all the stories in the papers that you're looking for a lady Doctor Who? Let's have the truth on well, television. Well, <laughs> it is feasible that uh, the Doctor could regenerate into a woman, but it's not something I'm considering too seriously. Then, 22 days later, Colin Baker, in a dapper suit, had a photo call and interviews with co-star Nicola Bryant to announce his presence to the world, starting with an interview with BBC News. Uh, it's one of those sort of parts that you never actually think you're going to be the one who's ever going to be Doctor Who and suddenly to find oneself doing it is wonderful. It's really quite a change of image for you, isn't it? You're normally a baddie. I did acquire that image when I did The Brothers all those years ago, and it's one that seemed to have sort of hung around a little bit since, but basically I'm a sweet guy underneath. Colin Baker had previously played a Time Lord guard in the season 20 story, The Ark of Infinity, which saw him at one point shooting and incapacitating his predecessor, something many news outlets were also very keen to point out. Last January, he was seen as Commander Maxill. In fact, he shot the present Doctor Who, though not, he stresses, in order to get his job. 
Unfortunately, media sentiment would not be as fun and as flippant in the coming years, as Doctor Who soon found itself in an 18-month hiatus, with the BBC controller at the time, Michael Grade, eager to put an end to the programme. It did manage to return, albeit with a reduced episode count and a reduced budget. And with the show floundering in the ratings and in need of a renewal, John Nathan Turner was ordered by the higher-ups at the BBC to sack Colin Baker, which he did via telephone call in the middle of November 1986. The worst part is, is that Colin Baker was given this news and there was still a month left of televised Sixth Doctor adventures to show, meaning that Colin Baker would still have to do interviews and press junkets and the whole media circuit without breaking the news to everyone else first. Check out this appearance on Saturday Superstore on November 29th 1986 and keep in mind, no one else in that room knows that Colin Baker is no longer the Doctor. Hello, Colin. Hello, David. Uh, if you had a work in TARDIS, where would you go and why? I think I'd probably go back to the beginning and start all over again, because I've enjoyed doing Doctor Who so much that I would like to start from right from the very beginning and do it all again, because I've met so many nice people and talked to so many nice people like you that it would be nice to go back two and a half years and start from scratch. Colin Baker was treated really poorly in that situation. There's no other way to describe it. But the announcement of his departure happened officially on December 18th, 1986. And then, two and a half months later, Scottish actor Sylvester McCoy was officially confirmed as Doctor Number 7 in another photo call with a really run-down looking TARDIS prop. And there was also Bonnie Langford, who played companion Mel. This photo call took place on March 2nd, 1987, and was reported on properly by the BBC Six O'Clock News. Standing on a box, the five foot six actor posed for photographers wearing the sort of long stripy scarf that has now become one of the Doctor's trademarks. Sylvester, who's 43, has appeared on children's television and recently played the title role in the National Theatre's Pied Piper. Now, here's where things get tricky. There was no official cancellation confirmation for Doctor Who when it broadcast its last episode in December 1989. The show just wasn't renewed, and fans were strung along for years as to whether or not it could return. The show would eventually return, albeit in a different form, in a BBC and Fox co-production with a TV movie pilot in the summer of 1996, which would see the return of Sylvester McCoy, who would, over the course of the movie, regenerate into Paul McGann. Now, you'd think that with UK and American interests, the early days of the internet, and so much other documented information about the TV movie, that finding Paul McGann's official confirmation would be easy. <laughs> no. For whatever reason, finding the initial announcement that we know happened in January 1996 was even harder than finding poorly catalogued and documented articles from the 1960s. Even the official Doctor Who website gives conflicting information, with this article that's all about Doctor announcements and departures, saying that the announcement happened on January 5th, 1996, but another official Doctor Who website page that talks about the movie's production says it was on January 10th. This website, Doctor Who The Millennium Effect, which is a pretty damn good resource for all things Doctor Who promotion, says it was announced somewhere between January 11th and January 19th, with Sylvester McCoy being interviewed about the upcoming production on GMTV. We also have Doctor Who The Complete History magazine, which says it was meant to be on the 9th of January that the announcement was made, but then it was pushed back a day later to January 10th, and announced via a BBC Worldwide press release, titled Paul McGann to start in new Doctor Who film for television. However, I've searched high, I've searched low, and I cannot find this press release anywhere. I asked for help online, with some fans even saying that the first official confirmation of Paul McGann happened in Doctor Who magazine issue 236, despite that magazine releasing in the middle of February, so over a month after newspapers started reporting on it. But just to make sure, just for this video, I managed to track down a copy. It's got a feature and details along with a photo shoot of a short-haired McGann at the Doctor Who exhibition in Longleat, but this wasn't the official announcement. So this casting was kind of a big deal, also kind of not a big deal, at least in terms of the media, but we're looking at Paul McGann being announced by some phantom press release on January 10th, 1996, and then newspapers running with the story the next day. The newspapers ran with photos of Paul McGann with short hair in front of a TARDIS prop. 
My favourite write-up from this time comes from The Independent in a column written by Gary Gillat, then editor of Doctor Who magazine, who writes a really heartfelt and supporting open letter to Paul McGann, wishing him all the best. Sadly, many people dismiss Doctor Who as a quaint and rather sloppily made product of the 60s. They are, of course, completely missing the point. The Doctor is one of British television's greatest creations. Doctor Who is one of the most inventive concepts of any TV drama. The TARDIS can take the Doctor to any place at any time. He can save planets from Dalek invasions or take tea with Marie Antoinette. He can battle killer shop window dummies on the streets of Ealing or mutant seaweed on the North Sea. He can do anything. Children have been denied such a hero as the Doctor for far too long. It will be great to have him, you, back on TV. Unfortunately, despite Paul McGann's portrayal of the Doctor being warmly received, the show did not manage to break into America, which was the target demographic, and thus the most expensive Fox TV movie ever made at the time with a budget of $5 million did not get picked up for a prospective season. However, as we all know, that's not the end of the story. On September 26th, 2003, BBC News officially announced that Doctor Who would be returning, with superfan Russell T Davis taking over, along with also announcing that it will be produced by BBC Wales under Julie Gardner. And then a few months later, on March 22nd, 2004, also via a BBC News article, it was announced that Christopher Eccleston would be the new Doctor, though the wording was careful to not call him the Ninth Doctor officially officially, as there were still some conversations internally at the BBC as to whether or not the TV movie counted as official canon. Fun fact, Paul McGann's depiction of the Doctor would not be officially endorsed within the canon of the TV show until 2007, in the series three-story Human Nature, when the Eighth Doctor appears in the Journal of Impossible Things. But going back to this BBC News article, look at this photo that they used to showcase Christopher Eccleston. There's no photo call, no headshot, just a random picture picture from the horror film The Others. Like, if you were a die-hard classic series fan, and you saw this image, and you lined it up with all the other classic series doctors, and you were told, yeah, this guy is the new one, I don't think you'd believe it. But it seems like most people were really happy with this decision at the time. At least that's what the chosen comments at the bottom of the page suggest, though I'm not really sure what Peter here is smoking. I don't know if he's quite sinister enough. The best doctors always had a slight air of menace about them. Colin Baker and Peter Davison were too nice. Not convincing enough. Colin Baker's doctor was too nice, apparently. You forgive me if I don't join you. So, it's 2005, the show comes back and immediately blows everyone away and gets chart-topping viewing figures. The show was then immediately commissioned for a second series. However, Christopher Eccleston, who struggled with personal issues during production and also had a very strained relationship with some of the directors and some of the higher-ups on the show during production, he decided to step away and bow out quietly. The original plan was for the next Doctor to be announced on June 18th, 2005. When the Ninth Doctor regenerates on screen in the Series 1 finale, The Parting of the Ways. Sadly, news of the renewal was about to leak. The BBC caught wind of it and decided to officially announce it on BBC News on March 30th, 2005. And in this article, they make reference to the rumours circulating of David Tennant's imminent hiring which would later be officially confirmed via a BBC press office press release on April 16th, 2005. Unfortunately, Eccleston was not pre-warned of the BBC's announcement of his departure, with him allegedly being out and about at the shops when the news broke, and being approached by strangers who started asking him about the news. I hope this never happens to you, but at the time of my leaving, I agreed with Russell that I would go quietly and respectfully and I would look after the show in publicity wise in terms of publicizing it and then without saying anything to me they announced that I was leaving they didn't tell me they were going to do that I was walking down the street and suddenly I got quite a lot of aggression they created a quote and they attributed it to me which said I was tired 
Any other producer reading that would go, oh, we're not going to employ Chris Eccleston because he gets tired. So it was a lie. And it was in quotation marks. And I'm from Salford. You don't do that to me. But as we move forward several years and some highly successful seasons later, David Tennant announced on October 29th, 2008, that he would be leaving the show after a run of specials that would broadcast throughout 2009. This announcement was made via a live feed at the Royal Television Awards. David Tennant was backstage during a production of Hamlet from the Royal Shakespeare Company in Stratford-upon-Avon. It was the intermission, and David Tennant had just won the award for Outstanding Drama Performance. Thank you to everyone. I'm, I'm very excited because in January I go back to Cardiff to make four new specials, which will see Doctor Who all the way through... Oh yes! Oh, cheer it up! Which will see Doctor, Doctor Who all the way through 2009. But... When Doctor Who returns in 2010, it won't be with me. I love how it seems to be the same woman who cheers and then screams in anguish over the course of a few seconds. When Doctor Who returns in 2010, it won't be with me. Now, an announcement for a replacement would be a few months away, as the Christmas special was a decoy. The next Doctor appeared to star David Morrissey as a potential new incarnation of the Doctor, but this was revealed in the episode to not be the case, it was a fake. With that special out of the way, the path was now clear, and David Tennant's successor could officially be announced in a special episode of the behind-the-scenes companion show, Doctor Who Confidential, broadcast on January 3rd, 2009. First, there were eight. Chris made nine. Hello! David was ten. Who's next? It's exciting. I am very jealous of the chap who's coming next, who's got all this extraordinary journey to look forward to. Meet the 11th Doctor tomorrow on BBC One at 5.35. This special aired only once, and it's not publicly available to view. It's not online, it's not on any home media release. But it's a great time capsule, with Russell T Davis and upcoming showrunner Stephen Moffat talking about the importance of change, how Doctor Who can renew itself, and they talk about all of the previous Doctors that came before, and there was also, of all things, a musical montage of David Tennant kissing. This special, narrated by Anthony Head, is just over half an hour long. And you're just watching it, it's going along, and then 24 minutes into it, Stephen Moffat is talking and talking, and then... The Doctor, who is the most familiar character in television, can become brand new. How do I feel? It just, I'm flabbergasted. I haven't slept, really, to be honest. Truthfully, I haven't. I'm sort of, I probably look a bit bags under the eyes now. Um, because it's sort of an iconic part of our culture, and, like, my granddad knows about it, my dad knows about it. It's... It's madness. Like, they stealth dropped Matt Smith out of nowhere. Like, no build up. He just appears. He's just there talking, this guy we've not seen before in the documentary. And then they put a banner under him. And now he's the 11th Doctor. It's bonkers. It's audacious. I love it. With Matt Smith as Doctor number 11, we have to make a quick pit stop before we get to Doctor number 12, as we might as well be a completionist here, as we've got John Hurt as the War Doctor, who made his debut in the show in the Series 7 finale, The Name of the Doctor, which was broadcast on the show's 50th anniversary year on May 18th, 2013. But the official announcement of his casting was made on May 18th, 2013. Yes, they were able to keep this announcement a secret, but not through lack of trying. A few days earlier, on May 12th, it was discovered that over 200 fans, 210 to be precise, had received their pre-orders of the Series 7 Part 2 Blu-ray box sets early, meaning that they could watch the time-shattering cliffhanger and spoil the surprise. The BBC managed to get in contact with those fans, however, and just politely asked them to not reveal the plot online. They even sent them behind-the-scenes interviews with Matt Smith and David Tennant as a show of good faith. Thankfully, all 210 fans, all from America, kept the secret. And here's a quote from Stephen Moffat reflecting on the incident. My favourite fact is that they are Blu-rays. Listen, 
We don't just leak any old rubbish. We leak in high def. 1080p or nothing. That's us. Every last pixel in beautifully rendered detail. It's like getting caught extra naked. But here's the thing. Never mind us blundering fools. Check out the fans. 210 of them with the top secret episode in their grasp. And because we asked nicely, they didn't breathe a word. Not one. I'm gobsmacked. I'm impressed. Actually, I'm humbled. And we are all very grateful. Fast forward a few weeks to June 1st, 2013, and it was revealed that Matt Smith would be stepping down and regenerating at the end of the 2013 Christmas special. With this being Doctor Who's 50th birthday, the BBC pulled out all of the stops to hype up the casting of Doctor Number 12. On August 4th, 2013, the BBC staged a live television event hosted by Zoe Ball, where a studio audience and millions of people watching in a worldwide wide simulcast would bear witness to the most rock star entrance ever. He may be a thousand years old, but he's about to get a whole new lease of life. Here we go, the big reveal, the crunch moment we've all been waiting for. Joining us now, live in the studio, exclusively on the BBC, please welcome the 12th Doctor, a hero for a whole new generation. It's... Peter Capaldi! With this announcement, two things stand out to me. One, I love that shot of Peter Capaldi's hand just before the name drop. Like that last moment, that last tease before making the full reveal. And two, Peter Capaldi doing that William Hartnell flourish with his lapels before he goes to sit down. You can believe that this guy used to be the head of a Doctor Who Appreciation Society branch. How did you prepare for the audition as the Doctor? Well, it was quite hard because even though I'm a lifelong Doctor Who fan, I haven't really played Doctor Who since I was nine in the playground. <laughs> so you look in the mirror and suddenly, strangely, he's looking back and, and he's not me yet. <gasps> we, he, but he's reaching out we're, we're, and hopefully we'll, we'll get it together. However, after three seasons, Peter Capaldi would announce his departure live on BBC Radio 2 on Joe Wiley's show on January 30th, 2017. Well, the emotional thread, uh, the, yeah, there's a number of them. I suppose the, 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 the big thing about it for me is that it'll be my last. Uh, so that's... It'll be your last? Yes. You uh, bow out after this series? I will, yes. Oh, really? This will be the end for me. Wow, how do you feel uh, about that? Um, I feel sad. Um, I love Doctor Who. Uh, it's a fantastic programme to work on and it's uh, been a huge pleasure to work with a family, mm. really. I mean, I can't, as I say, I can't praise the people I've worked with more highly. But I've always been somebody that did a lot of different things. Uh, I've never done one job for three years. This is the first time I've done this. Uh, and, and, and I feel it's sort of time for me to move on to different challenges. The wait for the announcement of the 13th Doctor would, up until this point, be the longest wait for fans, at 167 days. But on July 15th, 2017, a video appeared on the official Doctor Who YouTube channel, teasing that the TARDIS keys would be passed over officially the next day after the Wimbledon men's final. Wimbledon arrived, millions of Doctor Who fans had to pretend that they understood what a ground stroke was, and then we saw a specially filmed minute-long teaser video where Jodie Whittaker acquires the keys to her very own TARDIS PNG. Looking back on all of these casting announcements, I love how varied they are. Whether it's using the BBC's own news platforms, whether it's photo calls to invite in all of the rest of the media. We've got spin-off shows like Confidential doing announcements. We've got whole live announcements. We've got specially filmed things. We've got incorporations from the Doctor Who YouTube channel. It's great, and I think that using Doctor Who casting announcements to sort of track how hype cycles have changed and evolved over the past nearly 60 years 
is really interesting just to watch. I think using Doctor Who casting announcements to look at how the media hype cycles have changed and shifted over the past 60 years with mass communications and different formats and everything just showing where Doctor Who was at that particular time, I think it's really interesting. But we're not done yet, and much like John Hurt's casting in terms of offshoot Doctor reveals, we've got Joe Martin as the fugitive incarnation, and she was revealed on air without it being spoiled beforehand on January 26th, 2020, midway through the Series 12 story, Fugitive of the Jadoon. Oh, and before I forget, so this can be a more complete compendium of Doctor Who casting announcements, Peter Cushing was announced as a Doctor Who in an issue of Variety on March 9th, 1965. No image or anything like that, just the announcement of a Dalek film starting production at Shepperton Studio, with Peter Cushing and Roy Castle confirmed in the cast, along with director Gordon Fleming. Most exciting. We also have the casting of Rowan Atkinson as the Comic Relief Doctor, which was announced in the London Evening Standard on March 2nd, 1999. And lastly, it was quite difficult to find the first documented announcement of the 2003 animated webcast, The Scream of the Schalke. Unfortunately, it seems that the original press release, if there indeed was one, it's been lost to time. I guess a low-budget online animated cartoon for Doctor Who wasn't really seen as a big deal in the media back in 2003. But the earliest piece of casting news that I can find came from the Radio Times on July 19th, 2003, confirming that Richard E. Grant would be poorly photoshopped onto Tom Baker's body. Now, Jodie Whittaker announced her departure from the show, along with showrunner Chris Chibnall, on July 29th, 2021. At time of making this video, it's been around 220 days, which officially makes this the longest wait between announcements for casting of a new Doctor, if you don't count Paul McGann and Christopher Eccleston, of course. I think that Jodie Whittaker's departure was about to leak, so the BBC chose to get ahead of the story, much like they did for Christopher Eccleston. It makes some sense, considering that Whittaker and Chibnall, just a few days beforehand, appeared at a pre-recorded Comic-Con panel, and there was no indication or any sort of a hint of a departure. That could account for the lengthy wait between casting announcements, but that's just my theory. But folks, with all of those examples, what is your favourite way for a Doctor to be announced? Do you like it to be really understated? Do you like a big spectacle? Or maybe just a complete surprise? What was your favourite way in this video? For me, it's gotta be Matt Smith. Just dropping some random guy on screen and using that banner, like, like stealth bombing Matt Smith on TV. Like, it's brilliant. That was so good. And lastly, how do you think the 14th Doctor will be announced? Let me know in the comments section. Please start arguments and fights because apparently YouTube's algorithm really, really likes that. However it happens and whenever it happens, make sure that you're subscribed to my channel, the Mr. Tardis channel, to be updated on all of the information as and when it happens. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that like button because it really, really helps me out. And if you want to see more videos like this, firstly, please subscribe. It massively helps out, but you can also become a patron. You should be seeing their names appearing on screen now, but I'd like to give a shout out to these particular patrons. Andrew, James Raby, Dean Jones, Andrew Blewett, Callum Baird, Daniel Davis, Dylan Whitaker, Flabu, Flipmeister MK, Hunter Graham, Jeremy K. Duncan, John Campbell Rees, Leela, Mario Fanboy 15, Matthew Perry, Michael Serrano, Miranda Logan, Nate Harris, Palex, Raven Woods, The Brit Sniper, Toby Loxton, Lily Hu, Dan Morrison, Nathaniel Holden, Samuel Brooks, Zarbi555, Aaron Carver, Adam Gratton, Angus Bjarnason, Christian Rowley, Darius, Evil Dalek 79, Finley Rude, George is Lost, Ginger Animator, Harvey Smith, Jack D. Evans, James Ivory, James Morris Wyatt, Joseph Adams, Ollie Tomlinson, Rebecca Hill, Reese Lloyd, Ricky Temple, Ryan Duncan, Samuel Whitaker, Will, and Zach Conway. Thanks a lot to all of my patrons who helped to support the Mr. Tardis channel, and I'll see you folks next time.